start with uh, Deshaun, mm -hmm. just uh, obviously coming off the Raiders game, which is one of his better games. Yeah. Washington seemed like one of his worst games. Uh, so where do you go from here with him? I think, you know, the biggest thing that the approach that we have to take as a, whether it's the quarterback room or the whole offense is we, we got to grind. You know, we got to go in, work our tails off um, and, and, you know, do whatever it takes for us to, to go out and, and focus on this week and winning this week. And the only way to do that is take advantage of today, you know? And I think that's, that's the big thing. We just got to preach, you know, to our guys, to our players, to, to the building, everybody in here. The only way to go ahead and go out here and get a win this week is by focusing on this week. And, and obviously we're gonna learn from things that, that happened last week, whether it's through uh, adjustments, whether it's through uh, execution, those types of things, but uh, but the focus has to be on this week and not letting uh, one game become a second game uh, for us, and just really kind of grinding through it and 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 working, you know. And that's the only way that I know to to get through tough times is you, everybody goes through it, whether it's work or life, right? I mean, I've I've gone through tough times in in work and life, and the only way to get through it is not a. a anything other than than just keep grinding through it and 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 keeping an attitude of. I'm going to get this thing going in the right direction. And it just, from the outside looking at it, it just looks like everything's broken from the passing game to the run game, block, quarterback, receivers. Just if it can go wrong, it feels like it is going wrong for you guys right now. So when you have that volume of issues that you have to correct midseason, just where, where do you begin? Um, again, I think the, the big focus when, when things don't work out uh, the way you want to is, is is going back and just identifying, all right, where can we do, where can we be better? Where can we coach better? Where can we execute better? And just that, that understanding, like we talked about last week of the, the ownership of it takes all 11 on the field to execute in offensive football. Um, so I think those are, those are the biggest things you focus on. You, you go back and, and you make sure that uh, as coaches, we're, we're doing the, the things that, that we feel like is best to attack an opponent. Uh, keep a, a identity that, that we want to keep and then and then making sure that we are going out and focusing on hey we got to win today to help us on Sunday you know and, and I think those are those are the big things is you gotta I mean you got to take ownership not only of of Sunday but that that starts throughout the week it starts through preparation of you know, knowing what to do how to do it and, and I think our guys have have done a good job of preparing it's just you know you just want to keep taking those steps and keep keep uh, uh, stacking good days of work together during the week so that then you could go out and just think, you know, play without thinking and play free on Sundays and fly around and play fast. What makes you feel like Deshaun can still play winning football? Mm -hmm. I think we've got obviously, you know, a lot of faith in Deshaun. I think for us, it's, it's about, you know, everybody, everybody's got to do, uh, got to, got to be better. From on the offensive side of the ball. It's not just a, uh, a point the finger at, at one person, every, anything like that. As coaches, as players, we all have to do better. It takes all 11, and it takes more than 11 in offense because you got the, the coaches, you got you know the, the look team on, on you know giving us a good look on, uh, during the week. Um, you got guys who, hey, this route was for so-and-so, but all of a sudden something happens in the game, his shoelace broke. Hey, somebody else got to come in and run it, and we got to take ownership of that. So it takes all 11, um, and it takes that 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 mentality to to be able to do that. And and I think that's what I think we we uh, we've had here in the past, and and I think that's something that we're going to continue to harp on because in the NFL, that's just a, a matter of a fact of the matter. No one's going to feel sorry for you. You got to come out. You got to go out, and you got to grind. You got to work. You got to put yourself in position during the week to go out and have success, and, and there's a lot of pride in this building, and we're going to make sure we're doing that each and every week. And, well, and on the broadcast, Greg Olson kept talking about the amount of shotgun on first and second down, and that he said a lot of teams that do that have the threat of a quarterback run, but Deshaun's not really running that much. So, do you think that's a factor in some of the struggles? Is that you're in shotgun so much in early downs and not doing the play action? No, yeah, I think that's a that's a good question. I think what we try to do when you know when we are in the gun and and when we self scout things to make sure that that we're we're not one dimensional in in any piece of our game, whether it's gun or under, you know. And I think that's that's the big thing for us is 
looking at it, looking at our gun reps and what we're doing to make sure that we're mixing in the action game with the run game, with the RPO game, with the movement game, all those different things, and, and making sure we're balanced there. So that is a weekly thing you look at to make sure that if we are in the gun as much as we, we've been and as much as we were, that we're still being balanced in there, whether it's gun, pistol, uh, back strong, back weak, and different styles of play when you're there so that team can't just tee off on you knowing that you're going to only be in this protection, only be in this scheme. Can we, uh, Deshaun talked about how two high safeties, how teams have been using two high safeties against you guys. How can you guys use the run game to help open up the, cap of the pass game when you are facing two high safeties like that? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great a great question. I think that when you look at it, you want that balance of attack no matter what you're doing. Um, and you got to be able to run the ball versus a, a one high safety or a two high safety. And, and we want to be able to do that. We want to be able to play physical, let our guys come off the ball, attack. And uh, I think that's where, you know, that mental mindset of let's, let's, go, let's go attack. Let's go get after them, whether it's run or pass game. But I do think in, the, uh, in that two eye shell, whether it's, uh, um, you know, an execution piece on the, the pass game and protection, routes being in the right spots and, and making the right decision and allowing our guys to have rack, you know, or in the run game, it's, it all comes down to that execution piece. It all comes down to all 11 guys doing their job, not only, you know, for the success of the play, but for each other, you know, and, and, and our, our, our line trusting that, hey, the, the backs are going to, you know, do their job. Our backs trusting that the quarterback's going to do his job. The receiver's trusting that the tight end's going to do. All that, that trust just comes into, into play in offense football so that you could play fast mentally and not have to worry about anything. I'm sure you've talked with Deshaun about scheme and defense and all that. Have you felt the need to talk to him about just his overall confidence level and state of mind? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that that at the end of the day is something that if if we come out and we're better as a unit, um, you know, I think that's that's the big thing is is our focus is is on on the unit, all eleven guys being better, all eleven guys on the field just executing that play, you know, and I think that's. That's the big focus for us more so than anything. It's like, hey, let's focus on winning this play. Focus on this play every single play. We win that play, then move on to the next play and focus on that play and win that play. So whether it's Deshaun at quarterback, whether it's our guard, whether it's our tackle, I think that's our focus and that's what it's got to be. And a lot of times when you focus on just winning that play, you start stacking good plays and good things will happen for you. When uh, we were talk talking about that first and uh, Goal from the seven when um, Jerry Judy was wide open on the left side of the end zone. I think Deshaun yesterday said he was anticipating uh, Jerry going in a different direction. Was, so is that one of those choice routes that there was miscommunication or what happened there? Uh, no, and I, you know, again, I don't. I love getting into the specifics of reads and things like that. Um, but I think I, that, that was a play where we've got crossers coming across the field. You know, the, the corner was kind of in a, in a position, uh, you know, of, of being able to sl slough off right there. Uh, so I think just that's something we learned from uh, in terms of working, uh, working the progression and where, where to start, uh, you know, how, how, to kind of, how to kind of work through these things in terms of, um, you know, the, the, where to start with our, with our eyes and things like that. You know what I mean? So I think that's, that's a big part of that play is just uh, from, from a coaching standpoint, making sure I'm coaching it better, making sure that, uh, that I'm putting our guys in position uh, to make sure that, that when we progress through the reads, you know, just, uh, um, you know, our eyes are in the right spot and everything like that. And that's something I just learned from right there, you know, to make sure that, that, uh, that I'm coaching the, the plays in terms of those, those detail things to put our eyes in the right spot, get our uh, uh, work, you know, work those progressions and, and things like that. So um, I do think, you know, that, that's one of those where it, it happens really fast on you, you know, and, and uh, um, all of a sudden, you know, things are, things are crossing, things are, are condensed spaces. So that's something that I can improve on as a coach right there. There weren't a lot of points even in preseason, not that that matters, but my point is after five games of not scoring 20, <clears throat> in a, a winless preseason, do you think players are still buying into the offense? 
uh, I think that uh, the players are, you know, focused on on one thing, and that's going out and and being successful this week. And I think that's the that's the most important thing for us is is going out and being successful this week. And I think that's the buy-in that our, our players have. That's the buy-in that the building has, and that's our our sole focus on on the you know whether it's today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it is, we're focusing on right now, we're focusing on this week, we're focusing on going out and winning this football game. It's Jed's first full game. Um, how did you think he did, and do you think he can stabilize the line a little bit if he can stay in there and left tackle for you? Yeah, definitely good to, good to see him out there and come back out there and, and uh, you know be able to do, do a lot of good things for us. So definitely a um, good, good step for him to be able to come out and, and, uh, and be productive out there. Uh, be athletic, be physical, and do the things that that uh, that he was able to do. So very excited that uh, that he's back out there and and uh, you know being himself and being able to play free uh, and, and play like he's capable of playing. You guys converted only one of the 13 third downs again last week, and I think the average was like third and eight that you guys faced. So is the third down problem essentially still just like being better on first and second down at this point? I definitely think, you know, that that's going to help the third down numbers. You know, anytime you could have that first and second down production to give yourself, you know, a good chance on third and shorter yardages, that's going to definitely help you. You know, so I think that's always a, a focus for us is, is staying in the green and having good first and second down production. Um, you know, and, and then again, it, it all, I think it falls back to just all, all 11 of us out there doing our job, um, you know, like, like we're capable of doing, whether it's no matter what the situation, what the down distance backed up ahead of the game, uh, you know, behind in the game, third down, first down, it comes down to hey, all 11 guys, you know, being a little bit better, focusing on our execution and, and creating a spark for us, you know, and, and creating that, uh, creating that, that play that, you know, we, we know we're capable of making and just doing out and doing that consistently. And that, Last one. I'm going to go back to that goal-to-go situation in the third quarter. Because I think you guys had three mental mistakes in the span of, like, four plays, and it really showed on that fourth down where Deshaun noticed there was 12 men in the huddle, and he had to walk to the sideline. Kevin was beside himself. Just what, what causes that particular situation to occur, and, and why has that been so frequent these first five weeks where there's been so many mental mistakes? I think uh, again, it just comes down to all all of us being being better. Uh, you know, in that situation on the fourth down, we got to be significantly better communicators coming from, from starting with the sideline and then uh, coming in and out of the huddle, make sure we're communicating personnel so that everybody's on the same page. You know, so it starts with communication. Uh, it starts with us as a, as a coaching staff making sure we're doing that to, uh, with our players on game day during the week. And then again, I, I just I can't harp on enough. Like it just it really does take all 11 of us, you know. And and I think that's that's the biggest thing that that you've got to you know in in offensive ball, just that execution piece of of everybody just focusing on doing doing my job, you know. And and at times it's going to take doing a little bit more. From, uh, during the week, you know, to make sure that on game day we can play free without thinking and go out and fly around, and and that creates a, a high level of execution. Whether it's the quarterback, whether it's the receiver, whether it's the line, whomever it is, right? Just create that high level of execution by you know uh, the preparation you put into during the week. Thank you. Guess I'll ask the obvious question um, with the Charlie out. You know, just. What the, you know the comfortability you have with Rex and just what you know, how does that somewhat seamless, if it does, make it maybe a little bit easier transition for this game? It's or helpful that he was here during the preseason and we got a lot of work you know throughout training camp and our operation with the field goal in with the with the punt operation. So the familiarity with Rex and our system is is a good thing. Have you ever had a long snapper go on IR? No, have not. Um, so we're preparing Rex to be able to handle this game. How did he get hurt? It was really friendly fire on one of the punt covers in the at the toward the end of the first half. It was the second to last punt in the first half. I mean, just how valuable is Charlie in general? I mean, I think it's 152 straight games, so he's been such a constant for this organization. Yeah, he's he's a great leader for our group. He does a nice job with 
I would say that our communication overall for that unit, both on punts and on field goals, he is our captain. He leads the team. Um, the players meeting on Fridays post practice. He does a good job with those young players and bringing those guys along. So he's been a, a great player for our team and this organization for the last however many years. So did you guys uh, vote another captain for the time being or not? We have not. No, we haven't. No need. To not sure. Yeah, I don't know if we will get to that or not. That'll be on coach. How have you seen guys kind of handle this week, kind of all the adversity swirling around? Just how have, you, how have you seen guys handle it in the building here? I think Kevin's done a nice job as far as having everyone, you know, solely focused on this game. You know, how can we go 1-0 and and get this thing rolling? Because we all, we all believe that we need to do more and we need to, we need to play better, we need to coach better. And I think that everyone is – has been receptive to that and understanding that we, we all just have to do a better job. But you guys signed Tony Brown, the active roster today. Just what has he meant as a you know, special teams player for you, and what, what have you seen from him this season? Tony's a, Tony's a really good player for our unit. He has a lot of versatility. He's a corner, but he plays physical like a safety. Um, he's tough. Like I said, he is physical. He, he, can, he can run. You know, he has position flex on multiple phases. He's an impact player for us on our on our punt unit. You know, he and Mike at the gunner position, That's those are two really good players on the perimeter. And those, those guys give you a shot to have a successful play on those on that unit. Hey, but with Rex, I mean, he's been trying to do this for a long time and hasn't ever snapped in a game where he's kind of bounced around for a while. Is that just the nature of that position that there's there's not a lot of turnover there? There is not a lot of turnover at, the, at that spot. And I would say with specialists overall, I would say typically with, I would say more snappers and punters, sometimes it takes those guys to just really get an opportunity to show what they can do. There's like, and like you said, there's not a lot of turnover at those positions. And you get comfortable with the guys that you have and the familiarity and, but uh, I mean, tribute to, or credit to him for, you know, sticking with it. I've seen a lot of a lot of guys over the years that has stuck with it and ended up landing jobs. Like you know, one that comes to mind is a kid that I watched growing up was uh, Christian Kuntz, the snapper for Pittsburgh. Went to my high school, was a linebacker, uh, converted to snapping. Didn't really earn a job until a few years ago, and now he's been a really good player for for Pittsburgh. So. Uh, I think really it's a lot of times it just comes down to opportunity and then taking advantage of the opportunity when you get it. So hoping that he goes out and does, does a nice job for us. Your thoughts on the Eagles teams and what you guys are worried about this week or thinking about this week? Yeah, so I think that they're a talented group overall. They have – they're comprised, I would say, they've, they've got a good backer group. Uh, 57, Van Summeren is good. 42, Burks is a good player. They drafted a kid, uh, the Trotter kid from Clemson. I think overall they're they're a pretty solid group overall. Um, obviously, they have a really good kicker in, in Jake Elliott, and he's a, hit a lot of big kicks in his career. So that's a guy that we're gonna have to account for. The punter does a nice job, Braden Mann. They got him from New York, and then the returner. The, you know, there's a lot of returners that they could they could use. I coached uh, Isaiah Rogers and. In Indianapolis, I think he's a really good player. So there's there's a lot of guys we're gonna have to account for, and we're gonna have to step up to the challenge and be able to you know do you know do some things in the kicking game. How, uh, the field. how has Naheem looked so far, and how close is he to being a factor in this special team? I think he's improving. I actually, I talked to him last night. He feels like this is the best he's felt since since everything had happened since he's been back. Uh, I think he's close. Yeah, I think he's close and. You know, he he gives us, you know, really the the dual returner and being able to do both punts and, and kickoffs. So and he can he can run and he's had a lot of production in his career, both with me and in, and in Buffalo. So possibility he suits up Sunday. I mean, I think there's a lot of possibilities that, that could that could happen. So 
I think we you just keep a, you always evaluate as the week goes along and then make a decision at the end of the week. But those those things are definitely on the table. But for the, the fifty yard field goals being more more common, it's become more common in the game making the fifty yard field goal. I, I remember when if you made a fifty yard field goal that you know was headline worthy. Not to say that they are now, but. Are just are kickers just stronger today than they were uh, in previous generations, or why do you think there's been this um, increased success from beyond 50 yards that we're seeing now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if the the kickers are stronger, but I will say this: there's <laughs> there's a good amount of talented kickers in the league. You know, if you just look around, I mean, we have we have a good one. Even the teams that we've played already to this point, I mean. You have Aubrey Carlson. Those guys are those guys are talented. Um, obviously, Kaimi Fairbarn has had a a really good year already. He's hit like um, I want to say like almost double digit fifty yard kicks to this point. I think he has maybe nine or ten. So you know he's been a weapon for for Houston, and you know that 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 position is it's a critical position that you have a really good player there because it comes it's it's a points position. It's Sometimes it goes overlooked, but that's one of the most, if not, you know, the most important position besides the quarterback, I would say. How, how much do you think it is just coach's willingness to, to try the field goal? It seemed like in the old days, not the old days, but you get within the 35, whatever, and you're like, okay, we're in that, we're in that weird range now. Let's, to settle for it. Yeah. yeah. I think it always goes on, you know, how the game's being played, you know, the situation in the game. Um, so I think that, uh, it, you know, the flow of the game, you know, how many points you feel like you're going to need to be competitive in the game, you know. So I think that everything factors into it. But, yeah, I, I would say that you're seeing a lot more attempts from over 50 yards. Remember when the K ball was a big deal? Because uh, how long did that start? I'm not sure. But I know what you're saying, yeah. And there's a there's a big difference between kicking a regular football and kicking a a, a kicking ball, a K ball. Huge difference. They feel completely different. Which one's easier than the old the regular ball? The the K ball is definitely easier to kick than a normal football. What's the difference? Like, not to get too technical, but what is the difference between the two? Well, they they allow you to. Uh, they allow you to obtain the, the balls pregame. You have X amount of time to, to work on the balls. What they do is they really scrub, they scrub down the balls where the kicker is going to hit. It just enables the – yeah. There's, there, there's a lot of things to go. I don't know all the mechanics. The, the, the equipment guys will be able to tell you more on it. But what have you seen from uh, Kadarius Tony in his couple of weeks practice? That guy's got a skill set. He's fast, explosive. Um, he's really good with the ball in his hands. He can make he can make you miss. He's hard to tackle. He's a strong runner. Um, but we've you know we've seen his development. Uh, he was a little nicked up when he got here. Starting to see him more, I would say, in practice. So he's he's a good player. You alluded, you alluded to this earlier. Just Kevin's steadiness when things aren't going well. You've been around a lot of coaches. What is it about his his character or what or what have you that allows him to, you know, keep guys focused there during these tough times? Yeah, I think I think Kevin has done a really good job. You know, since I've been around him since I got here last year, I feel like the one thing with him is he's consistent in his approach. Both, you know, when we win games, when we lose games, it's always you know, okay, come in after a win, we're gonna fix the corrections. Come in after a loss, we're gonna fix the corrections and apply them to the next time we're out there. And I think that he has been consistent with his approach in in every facet, even when we haven't had the results at like like we haven't as of late. Um, and then keeping everyone focused on the task at hand. Like right now, what we're trying to do is win this game, right? Win this game, find a way to win this game, and then worry about the next game next week. But we're just trying to do everything we can to put a good product on the field and beat Philly. Thanks. Thanks, brother.